All right, engineers, so we talked in great detail about the adrenal gland, right? We went over in a lot, a lot of specific details. What I wanna do now is I just wanna get a quick overview of the adrenal gland. What stimulates it, what's its target organs, and some of the negative feedback mechanisms, okay? All right, so where do we have to start? We have to start in the hypothalamus. Now, there's a specific nucleus located in the hypothalamus, and again, uh, it's the, the nucleus that's actually gonna be in this area. If I were to draw, here's the actual neuron here. It secretes what hormone? This hormone that it secretes is called corticotropin releasing hormone. What's the nucleus that actually secretes? This is the paraventricular nucleus. What does the corticotropin releasing hormone do? It circulates down through the hypophyseal portal system and stimulates specific cells located in the anterior pituitary. Those are called corticotropes. And when the corticotropin releasing hormone circulates down through the hypophyseal portal system and stimulates this corticotrope, the corticotrope secretes two different chemicals. One we're gonna focus on and one we're not gonna talk about. One is alpha MSH, because we talked about that in the large detailed video. And then the important one, which is adrenocorticotropic hormone. All right, so now what's the function of adrenocorticotropic hormone? Okay, adrenal corticotropic hormone can go to this adrenal gland here, right? So the adrenal gland has two components that we talked about. If you look at these blue cells, these red cells, and these green cells, all of these three layers make up what's called the adrenal cortex. And in the middle of the adrenal gland is going to be the adrenal medulla. So what does adrenal corticotropic hormone do? Let's follow it to the adrenal cortex. So it comes over here, circulates through the blood, and it acts on a bunch of different receptors on these cells, right? So let's go ahead and remember these basic cells here. What was this blue cell layer here called? This blue cell layer here was called the zona glomerulosa. This red cell layer here is called the zona fasciculata. And this green cell layer here is going to be the zona reticularis. What the adrenal corticotropic hormone does is, is it can act on all of these three cells. So let's show that here. Look, it's coming in here and it bifurcates and it can act on these three cells. So it can stimulate the zona reticularis, it can stimulate the zona fasciculata, and it can stimulate the zona glomerulosa. Now there is other stimuli here, we'll talk about that in just a second. What is the zona glomerulosa responsible for secreting? It secretes chemicals, and these chemicals are controlling your mineral balance, so they're called mineral corticoids, right? What was the main one that we talked about? Aldosterone, right? And we'll talk about him in just a second and his effects. Then, what else? Acetyl, I'm sorry, adrenal corticotropic hormone can act on the zona fasciculata and it can stimulate the zona fasciculata to control certain types of metabolic activities with respect to glucose, right? And these are called glucocorticoids. Now the specific one that we talked about is cortisol. Okay, and then it can also, the adrenocorticotropic hormone can stimulate the zona reticularis to produce things that are going to affect your gonads or the ovaries and the testes, and these are called gonadocorticoids. Now we talked about these already, we're just gonna call them androgens, right? But the specific ones were androstone, dione, and DHEA, dehydroepiandosterone. Okay, now that we've done that, what is some other stimuli here for the zona glomerulosa? Because I wanna talk about him too. It's not just the adrenal corticotropic hormone, because he was one of the big ones, right? So again, what hormone is stimulating this process here? If we were to follow it out here. It's the adrenal corticotropic hormone, right? What is it doing? It's acting on the zona glomerulosa, zona fasciculata, and zona reticularis. There's other signals here. What is these other signals here? Other things could be for the zona glomerulosa could be angiotensin II. What is another signal here? It could be low plasma sodium ions and high potassium ions in the plasma. Right? And this is stimulatory, this is stimulatory, but they can also receive another signal here. It's not significant, it's from atrial nectaritic peptide, and it's inhibitory. Now, 
Angiotensin II, we talked about him already. He's important for being able to increase your blood pressure. These sodium ions are helping to stimulate the production of aldosterone, and atrionatriuretic peptide is trying to inhibit the production of aldosterone. And adrenal corticotropic hormone can have an effect on the zona glomerulosa to produce aldosterone. All right, so we've made all of these different types of sex hormones, uh, glucocorticoids, and mineral corticoids. One more thing is the adrenal medulla. So if you look here in the adrenal medulla, we already talked about him. He's actually made up of nervous tissue, right? So neural tissue. So he has the postganglionic motor neurons in here. And when it's stimulated, stimulated by the sympathetic nervous system, right, through the thoracolumbar output, it can secrete what? What are the chemicals it secretes? Epinephrine and noroepinephrine. And we talked about these in great detail, right? They help to be able to stimulate gluconeogenesis, glycogenolysis, and lipolysis, right? And increase your blood pressure. Okay, so what are these guys' effects in whole? Increase BP, increase uh, glycogenolysis, and they increase what's called gluconeogenesis and they increase what's called lipolysis. Okay, now, we've done these guys. What's the effect of mineral corticoids? Let's look at it over here. So what was that hormone that we talked about? Aldosterone. He affects the kidney, specifically in the distal convoluted tubule, right? And what's his overall function? He helps to be able to create sodium reabsorption. So pull sodium from the kidney tubules into the blood, right? and then he excretes out potassium. But as a result of the sodium moving in, who else follows? Water. So what's the overall result here? You increase blood volume and you increase blood pressure, okay? And you also increase the sodium content, all right? So you end up what's called hypernatremia. Okay, but this could, you know, not necessarily pathological. Okay. What was the other thing over here? It was with respect to cortisol. So here's our cortisol over here, right? So cortisol did a lot of things. What did it do? It acted on the white blood cells, your immune system. What does it do to the immune system? It suppresses the immune system, right? By inhibiting the release of a lot of different cytokines. So it suppresses the immune system. What does it do to the muscles? You remember it's actually a very, very uh, chronic stress hormone, right? So it can assist in what's called protein catabolism. So it can break down proteins into amino acids. What can it do here to the fat tissue? It can cause the fat tissue to undergo lipolysis, right? So it breaks down triglycerides into fatty acids and glycerol. And it can stimulate the liver to do what's called a very, very important process, and that process is called gluco neogenesis, okay? So it can take amino acids and convert amino acids into glucose. It can take glycerol and convert it into glucose. Tons of different things here, right? And it can also enhance the sympathetic nervous system's effects, right, by increasing the adrenergic receptors. All right, so that's cortisol, all right? So we talked about cortisol. We talked about aldosterone. We talked about epinephrine and norepinephrine. Let's finish up with these gonadocorticoids. They're nothing that we're gonna spend a lot of time on, and the reason why is they're so insignificant. They're very, very weak. I should actually put here, very weak. But what they do is they can, these androgens can act as precursors. So if, for example, if I wanted to go to the female, it could be used to make estrogen. If I take it to the male, the male can use that to make it into testosterone. But their overall functions of the gonadocorticoids, primarily if we were to just kind of overlie their entire function, is to control libido. So sex drive, okay? Good. All right, so now, now that we know that we understand what cortisol does, aldosterone does, and gonadocorticoids does. Now, real quickly here, with the cortisol, this is the one I really wanna talk about. If you're making, because what happens, adrenocorticotropic hormone stimulates your zona fasciculata to make cortisol. What happens if your cortisol levels rise really, really high? They exert a negative feedback mechanism. So let's say here's our cortisol. It exhibits a negative feedback mechanism. What do you do? You make less 
corticotropin releasing hormone. You make less adrenocorticotropic hormone. And then that triggers the, the uh, zona fasciculata to not make as much cortisol. That's that negative feedback mechanism. Now, if it was the exact opposite, if there's less cortisol, there's gonna be less inhibitory input, right? So there's gonna be less of that negative feedback mechanism there. It's gonna cause them to make what? More corticotropin releasing hormone. More corticotropin releasing hormone will actually stimulate the anterior pituitary gland to make more ACTH, and more ACTH will stimulate the zona fasciculata to make more cortisol. All right, guys, so I hope that made sense. In this video, we covered a general overview of all the adrenal gland hormones.